Hi everyone, my name is Srikant. Today we are going to learn about Fisher methods in Salesforce. This is part 1 in asynchronous Apex series and we'll go through some real time scenarios to have a better understanding. By end of this video, you will be able to understand what is Fisher method and we are, why we are learning it and we'll go through some scenarios and finally we'll learn about what are the limitations in Fisher method. Okay, first things first. Future method is basically an asynchronous process. Wait, wait, wait. What is asynchronous? Okay, for people who doesn't know this person, his name is Qboy, who always interrupts me in this kind of videos and will ask questions like this. As he have asked, before we go forward, we need to understand what is synchronous and asynchronous. Let's start. Okay, let's talk about synchronous job. Let's say when I woke up today, I have three tasks to do. One is taking a shower, and then eating my breakfast and then movie with my girlfriend. If we time frame this, taking a shower takes 20 minutes and for breakfast it takes 10 minutes and movie with my girlfriend takes 120 minutes. If you observe this task, one job cannot be started until the current job is completed. Let's say while taking shower I cannot start breakfast, which is synchronous process means one job at a time. In other words, we cannot perform any other task without completing the current job. Let's say after I have taken my shower and then had my breakfast, I understood my car is having trouble. So I need to take my car for servicing and it might take 2 hours and then I will go for movie with my girlfriend, which takes another 2 hours. Now if you see the time frame, shower 20 minutes, breakfast 10 minutes, car servicing 2 hours and movie with girlfriend another 2 hours. Then I got an idea to follow the asynchronous approach. Car servicing really doesn't need my physical presence. So after completing my breakfast, I will take my car to the servicing center and take a cab and go to movie with my girlfriend. While I return from the movie, I will take my car back. So if you see, while I watch the movie, my car servicing will also be done in parallel. So we can move certain tasks, so we can move few tasks to background so that they will work parallelly and we can work on our current tasks. Asynchronous is something which runs in background without having you wait for the task to finish. In this case, our car servicing. So if you compare synchronous and asynchronous here, if I wait for the car servicing for 2 hours and the total time would take 270 minutes which is 4 and a half hours. Rather, I will give my car servicing, car for servicing and take cab and then go to movie which means I have saved almost 2 hours. So this is the exact difference of synchronous and asynchronous. So in daily analogy, things that doesn't need my physical presence move into asynchronous, like I did my car servicing. So in Salesforce analogy, things that doesn't need user interaction, something like button clicks, giving inputs. So those kind of codes you can move into asynchronous, thus you can save your time. Okay, I understood what is asynchronous process. Why do we need asynchronous process in Salesforce? So as you have seen previously, if you move things to asynchronous, you can save your time. So you, can, you don't need to wait for few jobs which you doesn't need your attention. And if you follow asynchronous approach, Salesforce provides higher limits because you are giving Salesforce time to execute some job and then you are not asking the output immediately. Thus, Salesforce gives an extra benefit by providing the higher limits. Example, 200 SQL queries will be given to you instead of 100 SQL queries. Enough said. Now we'll talk about our protagonist of all the video, which is the future method. Future method is a set of code that runs in the background. So future method is basically like any other method. Let's say we have the four tasks here, right? If we make these tasks in Salesforce analogy, then taking shower is a like a method, eating my breakfast is a method, car servicing is a method, movie with girlfriend is a method. All of them are just a methods. But I want car servicing method has to be run asynchronously and that too in future. So if we want to make any method in future, just make that method with future annotation, something like this. So if we give at the rate future method for any given function, then Salesforce will understand, okay, this, class, this method is having a code which I need to run in background. I repeat, any method that has been given at the rate future annotation, Salesforce will understand this method has to be run asynchronously and move it in and move it into a separate thread. Very, very easy. And you also need to define future method with static void. 
so all the future method has to be static void why void void in the sense as it runs in future it cannot return any output to you at that point of time because in, it will run in future which means whenever the resources are available it cannot return any output to you at that point of time that is the reason we will be having void as a return type and one other important point in future methods is future methods will take only primitive types as params what is primitives so primitives in the sense integers booleans list of ids so it cannot take non primitives what are non primitives non primitives as s objects or any class types the reason behind is very simple let's say you send an account as a parameter and the account name is abc corporation and then before as it runs asynchronously it might take a little time to execute so between this time let's say that account name has been changed to abc limited instead of corporation it has been changed to limited future method cannot get the latest value it will still run on the uh, old values which will lead into the inconsistent results that is the reason it will only allow primitive types which are integer boolean list of ids etc i understood the syntax but how i call the future method very simple you call future method like any other method just the annotation a will be there the rest of it is same here he, this is a future method with static void class of his name if you want to call that method if you need to call it with class name class name dot car service name as easy as it this is how you will call any static method simple okay let's see how to define a future method so open developer console and then we'll try to create a simple class and with a future method so click on file create a simple class so as you have seen in the previous example we'll create today tasks as a class click so make it as a habit to follow coding standards so class name has to be started with caps name I mean every word has to be started with caps now I will just create a constructor okay constructor is something which will be called first for any class now in today's class in the example that you have seen we have four tasks one is take shower and then get ready so I will have this I will simply make it as create debug and then make it as I am taking shower so each of these tasks make it as a simple method public so second task is take bear get a breakfast have breakfast and inside this i will have i am having breakfast and third method would be so as my car is having trouble i need to have my third method as car servicing and then system dot debug inside i car is being repaired and we'll have our last method which is movie with girlfriend and in here i will have another debug log I am having I uh, I'm on break. So we have four methods. If you see, we have four methods. Each of them. So let's say if I call, let's say in today's task, I need to go one by one. So I will just in the constructor I will call all these methods one by one. So take shower, have breakfast, and then car servicing, and then move away with girl. Friend. so if you see i am calling each of this method one by one so this is a way of calling synchronous so this is a synchronous process if i call the constructor it will call each of this method one by one so i will just save this class and now we'll try to call this constructor so this constructor call each of these tasks one by one so one will be called after the other so i will click so I can call this particular constructor from executor onwards. This can be called from any button or from visual force page or from lightning page. So today task is a class name DDS tasks is equal to new today today tasks. So this is way of calling our constructor. So this will call this constructor and in terms this will call these methods. I'll click on execute 
then nothing happened right but basically all these four methods have been called so if we see the logs so a simple transaction has been created so for people who doesn't know debug logs so every time you do a transaction or like we uh, call a constructor or something some action every action will be calculated and sorry every action will be logged in salesforce and that is called as debug logs so if you want to see your logic is running properly or not you will have your debug statements that will be printed in this particular transaction so each of this row represents one transaction so as you have called your today's task and everything is running synchronously so it takes as a single transaction so you click on this and see whether your four methods have been called properly or not so you cannot go all through this directly right so instead of that you can just click on this debug only which will display only the statements that it has system dot debug log so you go there and then click on debug only obviously it have shown four statements first one is i'm taking shower which is the first task i'm having breakfast which is the second task car is being repaired is the task and i'm on a date that's the fourth task all of these being run synchronously one after the other okay none of them have been uh, taken as as separately now as we have as we have seen i want this car servicing has to be run separately because i don't want I, I i really don't need to be there physically so that's the reason we need to make it asynchronously as you have already know any method that has to be run asynchronously make it with future annotation and that future method has to be static and void anyhow that's already static void so there is no issues the adding of future annotation itself is in it so calling of any method is very much same calling of future method is also quite same so just make that method as future and that is it we are done so click on save and now this is the old transaction which is the transaction that we have seen now i will run again then you would be seeing two transactions why why because one is the transaction that will run synchronously second one is the transaction that will run asynchronously so i will open this synchronous transaction so future handler is asynchronous one this is a direct transaction so i will click on debug only only to see the three tasks that are being performed so synchronously there are three tasks performed one by one i am taking shower i am having breakfast i am on date if i see the second transaction which runs asynchronously it would have my car is being repaired task separately taken care so that is how future methods run even though it seems to be in the same way so if you see all the four methods are given one by one just because you mark this particular method as future it will treat it as a separate transaction and it will run separately that is how future methods have to be defined and that is how future methods will be executed i hope this is clear okay now we'll move forward i understood but when i should use this future method okay so we'll have three scenarios to discuss when we need to use this future method first scenario obviously you know this one whenever we need our code to be run on background then we need to go ahead something like car servicing so in salesforce we might need to delete set of records at once so actually we don't need to see the output so background it can delete so those are the times you can just write your delete operation in a method and then make it future scenario two you must have faced the mixed dml exception basically this exception occurs whenever you are trying to insert setup objects and non setup objects in one transaction so basically setup objects are users groups profiles layouts anything related to setup of uh, metadata then it's called an setup object non setup objects are something like our accounts contacts or custom objects and all so whenever you try to insert a setup object and non setup objects in one transaction then you would be facing this mixed dml exception okay why we are discussing about this mixed dml exception as i have mentioned future method will run asynchronously which means it will be acted as a separate transaction if you want to insert user record and account record then add your account insertion logic to a method and then make it future annotation then as it has been mentioned in future annotation it will be treated as a separate transaction thus you can be saved from mixed dml exception scenario 3 you cannot perform callouts from trigger so whenever this kind of problems occurs you can move this callout to future method and 
then you can call that method from trigger so obviously it will run asynchronously thus we can be saved from having an exception wow future method seems to be boss of asynchronous is there anything that future method cannot do yes of course future method has some limitations future method cannot do everything there are few limitations one you cannot call one future method with another future method so as you have know you can call any method from any method but you cannot call a future method from future method which makes it asynchronous from asynchronous so that's the problem and the second limitation is we can only have primitives as params this is something which we have already seen it will allow only integers boolean strings or list of ids as parameters but it will not allow non primitive types which are as objects and uh, any apex types subscript types so to face these limitations we have other asynchronous processes which are queueable batch etc so that is something which we'll see in the next session and that's the wrap up thank you if you like this video give a thumbs up practice 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 happy learning and bye